Hi, crochet friends. It's Tasha from Stardust Gold Crochet. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're new here, welcome. Thanks for visiting. I'm hoping you love this tutorial today. It's so much fun. This is a little granny square headband. I have never liked granny squares. <laughs> I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. But for some reason lately, because they're just saturating everything, I've kind of like, okay, okay, I can see the, uh, but what it is is I don't like crocheting them. So what I've done is I created a slightly modified version of the granny square. This is kind of my, my own version, one that I think is easier to crochet. So what I'm going to show you today is how to create the granny square. I'm going to do kind of like a little tiny mock-up, like three wide or something, or enough to make like maybe a granny square bracelet <laughs> or something like that. So two, let's do two and we'll make a granny square bracelet. But for the headband, you wanna make one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Or this pattern will be on the blog for free. Um, there'll be a PDF available for everybody who wants a PDF and that'll be in my Infinite Yarniverse shop on Etsy, Ravelry and all those, uh, you know, the normal shops. I prefer if you buy from the Infinite Universe though, because that's my shop. For all the lifetime members, you guys can get the PDF for this. It'll be in your inbox. Just log into the Infinite Universe and go grab your PDF. Okay, so what you'll need for this tutorial is I used five different colors of yarn. I'm using um, a sport weight yarn. It's really thin. I wanted to kind of do a mini version so the colors that I used for this are, the white color is called Axonite, and it is color 831, and it's called Axonite. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. This is turquoise, and then this is color 811, and it's deep amethyst. This is color 827, Periodot, and then this is color, oh, this one's a hard one to say, Rhodochrodocyte, <laughs> color 835. All of these colors will be listed on the blog and I'll also throw them down below. A 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. You're definitely gonna need scissors because you change colors a lot. Go ahead and also grab a measuring tape. You're gonna wanna measure your head. Most, most adults have the same size head. Um, I know that sounds really funny, but they do. Um, even my grandson's head is almost as big as my head. So this headband measures around 19 and a half inches, which is perfect to go around a normal adult size head. If you wanna make it smaller or bigger, just eliminate one of the squares and that should be perfect. Um, eliminating one of the squares will probably add on, let's see, whoops, wrong way. Four of the squares is about 14 inches, plus the ends, which are about one and a half, one and a half inches each. So that would be three plus 14, that would be 17 inches. So that would probably be perfect for the size of like a young child, like a toddler or something. The little tails you can adjust and make as long or short as you want them to. So let's get started. Grab your hook. I'm going to show, I'm going to do two squares and then I'll do a border to show you how I did the border and then I'll do the little um, end piece and the chain. These little beads I've had forever in my bead stash. Um, they have kind of a little bit of a wide uh, hole in them so you can get, I was able to get this through so you can use any beads and I just tied knots. I put one on, tied a knot put one on, tie a knot, put one on, tie a knot. That's it. Let's get started. You're going to learn a few new techniques today. If you haven't already known what they are, I'm going to pull this out. Um, so for this granny square, which is unlike any granny square you'll come across, or maybe not, I don't know, nothing's real original. We're going to do a magic circle to start. So I do this. You can do a magic circle any way you want. Um, I'm going to do that again. I put it in this first one, then I grab the second one and pull it up and kind of twist it around. And then I twist back around this way and pull through. So that's how I do my magic squares. I'll put a link down for my magic square video too, if you want to practice it. Then I pull that piece out. So what we're going to work today is we're going to do a stacked double crochet. So a stacked double crochet 
um, once you do your pull through, you're not gonna chain again, but you can if you want to, it's no big deal. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a, a single crochet here. And what we do for a stacked is you're going to go through the left bar of your single crochet instead of going around into the um, magic circle. Then you yarn over and pull up just like a regular single crochet, yarn over and pull through two, and you repeat that until you have three of them. So I'm doing let's see, stacked. So that's gonna be my first double crochet of our granny square. Now we're going to work two more double crochets. Your tension can be like a medium tension. You don't wanna be too loose, but not too tight. So we're going to do, that's three. We do two chains and then work three double crochets into that magic square. Do two double crochets and work three more. One, two, three, two. Did I say double crochets before? I meant chains. Two chains and then three double crochets. One, two, three. So we should have one, two, three, four sets of three. And that's when we're going to pull our magic circle tight, but first untangle it because sometimes they get wrapped up. So I'm gonna pull it tight like that. There we go. And we're going to do two more chains to close out. And we're going to join into the very top of that stacked single crochet slash double crochet from the beginning. Like that. And I'm going to do a straight slip stitch through. Then go ahead and break this yarn, pull it through like that. So we're gonna add our next color and then we're gonna add it into the chain two space right here, right after you where you broke off. So I'm gonna use this pretty green cause I really like this green. I think it looks really pretty with the pink. I'm going to add the new color here and we're going to do a stacked double crochet. So I'm gonna chain one through, then go back through the center and kind of wrap that tail around it. Yarn over and pull up a loop, then pull through both. So you made one single crochet, then go back through the left bar and you do another single crochet and one more time and that'll be your stacked double crochet. All right, so once you do that, we're going to work two more double crochets, work around your tail. Oops. Okay. I almost went too fast. So you'll have three double crochets, chain two, do three more double crochets, I'm working around the tail as I'm doing this, so it's a little bit easier. Honestly, though, it's still not easy. Chain two and work three double crochets. Two and three, two chains. Oops, double crochet three. two chains, double crochet three. Two chains, double crochet three. Two chains, 
and then we're going to work into that chain two from the very end of our first round. Just like before, you do three double crochets, two chains, and three double crochets. These work up fast once you get the hang of it. If you're a new crocheter, this is kind of a good project to learn how to work in the round and also color work, changing your colors. So for the last part, we do two chains again to close it out and we attach into the top of the stacked double crochet. And I've worked this up a few ways and I did slip stitches, but then I realized when you do the border, working through the slip stitches is really hard. So what I'm doing now is just basically cutting them and tying it off after each round. Then grab your final color which is the axonite I'm using, the white, and I'm going to work into this first chain two space and do the same thing we did before, just chain one, working around. We're gonna do a single crochet and then a stacked, two more stacked on top of the first one. The stacked single crochets is great because then you can also create a cord using this method. So we're gonna do two more double crochets because these stacked three single crochets are acting as your double crochet. Chain two. And then three double crochets into the same space. chain two. This time we're going to work one set of three into the chain two space. And now we do two more and we're going to work three, two chains and three into the corner space. One, two and three, two chains. I'm working fast, but feel free to stop the video anytime if you wanna catch up or I think I'm about to have yarn barf, or maybe not, yay. So chain two after you create your three, two chains and three, and we're going to do a set of three double crochets into the side stitch. One, two, three, chain two. And we're going to work three, two chains and three into the corner space. One, two, three, with chain two. And one, two, three, and chain two. Again, we're gonna do three into the side. So in the corners, you're working three plus a chain two and three. In the sides, you're just working a set of three double crochets. Chaining two in between each set of double crochet, th of three double crochets. One, two, three, plus a chain two. One, two, three, and a chain two. And the last one is where we did our join. You're gonna weave these tails in. You can always crochet over them this way too if you want. It's one, two, three, oops. Working with the small yarn can be a little, ah, I dropped it twice. See, a little tricky. To close it out, chain two, and then join into the very first 
stacked. And again, just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and snap, snip that yarn and just pull it on through and close it out. The border is gonna cover up a lot of this. So there, we have our first little square. So I'm gonna work another square off screen and when we come back, I'll show you how to do the border. All right, I have my two little scranny squares and now I'm going to show you how to do the border. I'm gonna do a pink border. Okay, so I'm not bothering weaving in the tails just yet. You can do that when you're finished. Um, I am gonna work this part on the top side. So when you're lining them up, make sure that your tail for the very last row is on top like this. So both of them are on top. Oh, hi Yuki. <laughs> hi Yuki, are you gonna come do this with me? Okay, so I'm gonna grab my yarn. We're going to do our first stitch in the corner, top right corner. You want your right side facing you. And I'm gonna add my yarn and I'm gonna do a pink border. Attach your yarn, chain one, and we're gonna work a half double crochet into that same space. Then we're going to work a chain two and one half double crochet into that same space like that oh did I just do a double crochet I did that's why <laughs> when you've been doing them for so many double crochets you're like oh switching speeds so I'm doing a half double crochet and I'm gonna work a half double crochet into each stitch so don't forget that this one kind of hides this is your double one two three so you want to go into this space right here and I'm going to do half double crochets across into each stitch. Then so, just like you have two chains, we're going to work two half double crochets into each chain two space. You continue that across working one half double crochet into each double and then two into the chain two space. And for this tail, I'm just gonna end up working over this tail. Oh, <laughs> I just yeeted that across the table. And so I'm gonna kind of bend that back and pull it a little bit tight while I work into this double crochet. Two. Then there's working into my last double crochet. And I'm going to work one half double into the corner space there, like that. Then I'm gonna grab my other granny square, make sure my tail's on the top, and I'm gonna go straight into the front of the corner stitch right here, but I'm gonna do a half double crochet, so I'm gonna yarn over first, stick my needle or my hook through there, grab it, and do half double join through there and then work a half double crochet in each double across just like we did before and work two into each chain space so when you get to the corner we're going to work the same type of corner stitch we did to begin with We're gonna do a half double crochet, two chains, and a half double crochet into the corner stitch. This is my tail, so I worked around that. You can pull it tight if you want. I'm gonna let that down now. And I'm gonna continue working half double crochets into each double crochet and two into each chain space all the way around. So I'll probably end up speeding up the video right about now. All right, when we reach the corner, we do one half double crochet, two chains, and a half double, and continue working half doubles in each double. Mm -hmm. 
when you come here to this corner work one half double crochet then you're going to pull up your other square and attach it just like we did before into the chain two space in the corner and continue working when you reach the corner one half double crochet two chains one half double crochet and continue working your half doubles okay so I have one double crochet left and I'm going to do my last half double into there then I'm going to join into the first half double crochet like that there we have our two squares joined and as you can see there's a giant space right there so when the time comes we're going to sew that up with a mattress stitch and I'll show you how to do the mattress stitch so once we're here I didn't break my yarn what we do from here is we're going to create the little border oh this looks so cute with the pink that for the next row we're gonna work um, a single crochet row into the back hump or the front hump however you want to describe it um, of the half doubles so it creates this kind of cool little ridge okay so we're not going to break the yarn we're going to keep it as is and we're going to chain one then we're going to turn it and we're going to single crochet into the back or these front loops which is actually like if this is your front piece that's your front loop back loop of a half double I'm sorry I turned the thing that's your front loop that's your back loop that's your third hump loop <laughs> however you want to some people call it the hump you can call it the third loop I call it the third loop we're going to start with the first one here this one's a little hard to get into when you're first starting it and if you want you can go ahead and work it into the back loop of the very first stitch instead of the hump which is fine so I think I'm going to do that for this first stitch. I'm going to work it right there. So that's one. And work into the back hump. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So we should have 14 stitches across. This is what it looks like on the front. For row two of the side border, we need to chain one and turn. And so we're going to work into the very first stitch doing a single crochet two together which is inserting your hook into the stitch pulling up a loop insert your hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop that is your decrease so we're going to do that one more time so now we've taken four stitches and brought them down to two stitches then we're going to single crochet six one two, three, four, five, and six. Then we do the same and do two single crochet two together decreases. So one, that's one decrease, and then we do one more decrease. Chain one for row three and turn then we do a single crochet decrease, single crochet six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we do a decrease. So we have two stitches left, 
Now for row four, chain one, turn, single crochet two together, decrease, then we chain and we single crochet four, one, two, three, four, and then decrease. You see where we're going with this, right? For row five, chain two, I'm sorry, chain one, turn, then work single crochet two together, decrease, single crochet two, decrease, chain one for row six and turn Row six, we're gonna single crochet two together two times. So we're gonna work two decreases. That's our first and then our second. For row seven, chain one and turn. This is our very last decrease. We're making kind of like a little pyramid by doing so many decreases. It's our little triangle. So once you're here, this is when we start working the chain. I, for this, just chained about 36. It measures around. You can make that longer. You can do a full bead if you want. You can be creative as you want. So my chain measures with the end of it was a little bit longer, but the main part of the chain is about six inches long. I did 36 of them. So yeah, you can make this as long as you want or as short as you want, or you could do a stacked, a stacked version too. And just chain, chain, chain. I added my bead. I made a little knot. I tied like three knots in a row. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but that's just what I did. And I added another bead, tied some knots, added another bead, tied some knots. So that's all I did. And they're pretty secure. They don't come off. Now I'm going to show you guys how to do the mattress stitch to close these up. And of course, you're gonna have lots of tails to weave in, which is always fun, not fun. This is what ours looks like so far. I just love this. I just think it's so cute. This will be a cute little bracelet. So for this bracelet, I will probably just do one side like this and add a button over here or something, you know? And maybe just make a loop right there. That would be so cute. Oh yeah. I'm gonna look like a Granny Square Wonder Woman. A Granny Wonder Woman, cause she had the choo -choo. <laughs> Okay, I'm just yapping. Well, now I'll show you how to do the mattress stitch to sew this to, ooh, excuse me. To show this, sew this together. Um, I'm going to use the same color as I used for my squares. It disappears anyway, which is really cool thing about the mattress stitch. So just grab, since, okay. What I did with this one, with the big one, is I did a very long length of yarn to start with because I wanted to, when I sewed them together, which was on, this is the wrong side. I started on the wrong side. I sewed it up this way started here, sewed it up, then I went all the way through, sewed it back down, all the way through, sewed it back up, and you get the drift. So I'm not gonna cut as long a length because I'm just doing one for this, but I will sh demonstrate for you how I did the entire length of this one. So for the mattress stitch, of course, you want to thread your needle you want to work through the wrong side of your work. You can just weave all those tails in later. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get kind of close here. So to start your mattress stitch, I went through this little piece to start. You pull through until you have, you know, a good length of tail so you don't, you have enough tail to weave in. Then you can kind of turn it. I'm gonna get rid of this tail 
oops, I'm gonna get rid of this tail so it's on the other side of the work so it's not getting in our way. Then you go through the opposite side and you're working from the bottom up through the top. These tails were a little, like you might wanna weave them in before you do the mattress stitch because they could get in your way. So just pull it up like that. Then you work back through each end stitch is where I worked through, like each little side stitch. See what I'm saying about these tails? Ah, you might wanna weave them in. It's a verifiable mesh. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Oh, are we here yet? No, this one's in the way. Okay, there we go. We're back to cooking with fire. Okay, so I just went through that side. Now I'm gonna go through that side. So keep going back and forth through. Okay, so you keep working like that through each one of these stitches until you reach the very, very top. Just like that. And it'll kind of look like this at first. You can tighten it as you go, or you can wait to the end and tighten it. Either way is fine. Um, it ends up looking the same. So when you get to the chain two spaces, I just did kind of the same thing and just went through one loop of each of the chain spaces. Chain two spaces, I mean, the chains. Yeah, highly recommend weaving in your tails prior. So I'm coming up to the very, very end. I'm gonna go through this little stitch, the edge, just one loop of that. I'm gonna go back through this one little side right there Okay, so there we have our completed stitch. Now here's the cool part. You take the tail and you take this side and you kind of just pull them tight and it kind of disappears into this really cool, like magic, just disappears, which is so cool. You know, stretch it out a little bit because you don't want it to be too tight. But when you flip it over, this is what it looks like. That is your mattress stitch. Okay, so to do the other side, we're going to insert our hook, starting in the very first stitch here. Actually, I'm gonna start in this, starting in this space here, which looks like it's the end, but it's actually, that's the stitch. It looks like it's in the chain. So attach your yarn there chain one and then work in a single crochet in the hump of each stitch it's like the front loop make sure that you have 14 across that you're able to work into 14 14 loops so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and fourteen this one's part of a chain so we want to just make sure we have those 14 so we're gonna do 14 single crochets and then work the pattern exactly, rows one through eight, just like we did the other side. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna stop here because I want to create this a little bit different. I want the ridge on that side, but I'm gonna put a button and just tie it off after this row for my little bracelet that I created for this video tutorial. <laughs> which is cool okay let's see did I do it right we get two four six eight ten twelve fourteen I'm amazing just kidding um okay well no I'm kind of amazing no I'm not yes I am oh lord we're all amazing all right everybody have a great afternoon, a great evening. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions about this pattern, please leave them in the comments below or head over to the blog and leave them on the blog. You can always send me an email too. Thanks everybody for being here. I hope you enjoyed creating this pattern and happy crocheting.